I bet you didn't know that the Healy's brand at its height was worth $1 billion. And just a few years later, they were worth just a fraction of that. So why did the Healy's brand have such a meteoric rise and a catastrophic flop? Well, we're gonna figure that out today and finally answer a question I've been wondering since I was 12 years old. What's inside Healy's? How do they work? And why was Healy's one of the biggest flops in footwear history? In 2020, there was over 5 million car crashes, which is 15,000 per day and 600 every single hour. And that's why this video is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan. Because if you're injured and don't know where to start with Morgan & Morgan, it's super easy. And I've always had the impression that lawyers is a daunting task where lots of paperwork, meetings, phone calls, research. But with Morgan & Morgan, they've modernized the injury law process. And you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the comfort of your couch. And you can submit your case, sign contracts, upload documents, and medical records all from your cell phone. And you can even text your attorney and legal team throughout the duration of your case. And if you don't know, there's certain things you need to do when you're in an accident. One, make sure you're okay. Two, make sure you get a police report. Three, make sure you contact your insurance. And four, make sure you get legal representation. And getting started is super easy. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim with Morgan & Morgan. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Thanks again to Morgan & Morgan. To fully understand the fall of Healy's, you have to understand their history that started in 1999 when Roger Adams comes up with the idea of putting a wheel inside of a shoe. And Roger was a clinical psychologist that had a lifelong love of roller skating and while in Huntington Beach he would see kids and adults riding their skateboards and rollerblades around and he thought there had to be an easier way and a more convenient way to get around. Then later that year, he designed the very first prototype and pitched it to the giant of the time, Skechers. But unfortunately, Skechers just had zero interest and completely rejected the idea. So after the rejection, he decided to do it himself without the support of a big brand, which meant he had to find some serious cash. And in May of 2000, he obtained $2.4 million in venture capital and started Healing Sports Limited. Then later that year in September, Roger had the capabilities to distribute 30,000 pairs. So he took his invention to a retail trade show and pitched his new invention to stores like Gadzooks and Foot Locker. And to Roger's surprise, the distributors bought in. And by the time they hit store shelves, it was just a matter of hours before the entire stock was sold out. So it seemed like the proof was in the pudding and in the following months, sales tripled every month afterwards. And within nine months, the company had sold over half a million pairs. And throughout early 2001, Healy's continued to explode in popularity due in part to Healy's paying people to go to public places and skate parks to demonstrate Healy's not just as an easy way to commute, but as a potential sport to rival skateboarding and rollerblading. And then as hype slowly built by the holiday season of 2001 with the newly found interest in marketing revenue, they hit the advertising hard by running ads on a ton of TV shows, most notably MTV. And I remember that very well as a young 11 or 12 year old. And it felt like overnight, everyone was wearing those shoes, especially after Christmas break. Everyone came back, was just gliding around the hallways. Meanwhile, I was still mechanically walking around like a fool. And then over the next few years, Healy's just continued to grow in popularity and slowly became very mainstream as seen by Usher wearing a pair in You Don't Have to Call music video. And then by 2006, Roger felt in order for the Healy's brand to get to the next level, they needed an influx of cash. And so that's why they decided to take the brand public. So when Healy Sport Limited IPO'd, it generated over $135 million in capital investment. And then over the next six months, Healy's equaled the entire 2005 sales, totaling $44.6 million. And then in 2007, after all the marketing and the IPO and the influx of cash, Healy's stock hit an all-time high of $36.92 per share, making the company worth over $1 billion. But as popularity grew, Healy started to get banned in schools, stores, and malls due to accidents involving Healy's. And then throughout 2009 to 2012, Healy's popularity really took a nosedive and that stock price plummeted from almost $37 per share to just $2.25 per share. So in 2013, Roger and the other investors decided to sell the Healy's brand to the Sequential Group, a group that manages consumer brands like DVS, Martha Stewart, and one Jessica Simpson for $63.2 million. And then over the next few years, sales just continue to plummet year after year, leading to 2021 when the Sequential Group files for bankruptcy and sells Healy's to BBC International for $11 million. And then fast forward to today and BBC International still owns Healy's and you can still buy them off the Healy's website from Journeys and Amazon. So in a matter of 14 years, Healy's went from being valued at over a billion dollars to being sold for just $11 million, one one hundredth of its value at its height. So what happened? Why did it fail so absolutely miserably? 
That's what we're gonna to try to figure out by dissecting this shoe. So first, what is this shoe? Well, the brand is Heelys. The style is a premium one low. They weigh one pound, 6.3 ounces. They retail for a pretty affordable $80. They're made in China. And the way that Heelys positions this product is the Heelys vision is to inspire kids to be active, explore their freedom, unleash the fun and be fearless. For kids, Heelys aren't just shoes. Heelys are an attitude, a way to express themselves, push their own boundaries and experience their world around them in a truly unique way. One reason that these probably flop so hard was that they're notoriously flimsy because this looks like a leather shoe, but if you look really closely, it's fake leather. And to double check that there is no leather on the shoe, we did the flame test on every single panel and every single one just melted. So why didn't they just use real leather? Well, fake leather is significantly cheaper than real leather. So it's an easy way to cut some corners to bring that price down to an affordable level and increase the margins. Well, what about the inside of the shoe? Well, if we take the insole out, you know, it's, it's a, it's just a standard cheap insole, nothing special. But underneath is where the shoe gets really strange because under the insole, you have some really cheap lasting material just at the ball of your foot. And then it's sewn to a giant wedge of foam, which I'm assuming is used to create a big enough cavity on the inside so the heel can tuck up into the inside. But the problem with this is when you put these shoes on without the heel, it's like you're walking in high heels, your toes slide to the front and they're just generally uncomfortable to walk around it. So it seems like a huge flaw in this shoe is that it's not a purpose-built shoe. It's not a purpose-built skateboard or some other accessory. It's a half and half hybrid that doesn't really work on half of the performance, which is the shoe side. But there is at least one component of the shoe that isn't a complete nightmare, and that's the outsole. Because this is the very first time I've actually seen this in a shoe across the over 300 shoes that we've dissected and cut apart. So what is this feature? Well, this bad boy lights up. So it's a safety feature, it's a flex feature, and just generally, it's cool to have a light up shoe. But all joking aside, the downside of this is that the money that they spent on the electronics and the lights and the LEDs and the batteries on the inside could have easily been spent on upgrading the materials and making it an actual functional foot, piece of footwear piece of footwear to make it actually functional footwear. And to be honest, the outsole really isn't that bad. I, as long as it's a decent thickness, it seems like a pretty decent durometer. It's not sidewall stitched or anything, but it's not like it's a really thin, flimsy outsole. It grips pretty well and it seems pretty durable. But for the most part, everything that we've seen from the shoe is just bottom of the barrel quality of materials. So where is all this cost coming from? Well, I think a lot of it comes in the heel. So how do the Heelys heels actually work? You have to pop this out with the tool, push the wheel in, and if you want to replace it, you have to grab the tool again, use it to pop the wheel out, and then pop the cover back in. And at that point, why wouldn't you just ride a skateboard? It's because it kind of defeats the whole purpose. If you have to carry things around with you and you have to stop and basically take your shoes off to replace the wheel with the cover, all while the materials that matter most, especially when you're relying on them to keep you safe, they're plastic. And it's bad enough that the thing that you're walking on all day is plastic, but once you get to the inside, this entire half cylindrical housing is just another piece of plastic. So one of the most important structural parts of this shoe is made out of plastic. But if you look at the wheel itself, this might be the only thing that's actually made of some decent quality because this wheel is made out of high density polyurethane, the same stuff they make skateboard and longboard wheels out of. It also has two ABEC 5 bearings on the inside and a hardened steel axle. But the problem is this hardened steel axle, you would assume would need to be sunk into some sort of metal housing or something, but it just pops into plastic. And the problem with that is if you pop this in and out too many times, you're just gonna wear that plastic out and then all of a sudden this wheel comes sliding out at 20 miles per hour in the mall, fall in front of all your friends, embarrass yourself, or if these bearings happen to seize up and this wheel starts spinning the axle itself, it's only a matter of 20 feet of riding and this axle is gonna burn through that plastic. And that's why throughout the Heelys history, there's been several lawsuits for millions of dollars about these shoes. So why would they use such cheap materials in this shoe? Well, because this is clearly not made for performance. But more importantly, these shoes are predominantly positioned to sell to kids and more specifically to kids' parents. And if they did upgrade all the materials, the price would inevitably go up. And why would they make these shoes more expensive when kids are just gonna be sick of them after a week or two if they don't grow out of them before that? So Roger's initial concept of making these the next skateboard or the next rollerblades was inherently flawed because by making this a hybrid product, you have to combine the performance of roller skates or skateboards with the style and the comfort of a shoe at the price of a kid's shoe. But I really don't think Roger's that dumb. I think he knew that going into it, at least very early. So let's cut these in half and see if there's anything we can point to that confirms that Roger knew exactly what he was doing.
All right, we got them chopped in half, except for this hardened steel axle. That at least confirmed that it is a very hard steel axle. So, let's see what's inside. So what's on the inside of Healy's after 20 years of wanting to know? Not a whole lot, and it's exactly what we expected. I honestly thought there's gonna be more to it, maybe some mechanisms or something on the inside, but it's very, very simple. But one really cool thing is we cut right through the middle of the battery, so you can see the internal structure of the battery and how it lights up. But now that they're cut in half, you can clearly see how flimsy these really are. And that just to me confirms that these really are just a kid's toy more than a performance shoe or even a, a kid's performance shoe. But I think it's the only way that they could have done it because adults aren't really gonna buy it. Parents don't wanna spend the money on a gimmick or a toy that they're just gonna grow out of before they wear them out, if they even use them or learn to use them at all. Because if I had a pair, I would have fallen once and immediately been embarrassed and never tried them again. And so this whole project just seems like it was fundamentally flawed. Because to make this truly the next X game sport, they would have had to charge, in my estimation, of two to $300 to upgrade all the materials and the components. And no parent is gonna take a $300 gamble on a gimmicky little shoe. So it almost had to be a flash in the pan. And I think that's why Healy's failed so miserably. But I think that Roger knew that. I think that he never really planned on them being the next extreme sport. I think he marketed it in that way with no real intentions of it ever being more than just a kid's toy. I think he just used that as marketing to make it seem like it's the next big thing, to build the hype around it, to make it seem really cool because you're marketing to children or at least children's parents. Because he had to know going in, it was just a matter of time before all schools banned them, before all malls banned them, before lawsuits came flooding in, and most importantly, it was only a matter of time before the gimmick wore off. But to Roger's credit, I think he knew all of that going in, and now re-looking at this whole video afterwards, through the lens of that, I don't think it was as big of a failure as I initially thought. Because I think they did it about as perfectly as anyone could have with this product. Because in just seven years, they took a concept and grew it to a billion dollars of value. They made it a publicly traded company, they rode the wave as long as possible, and then they sold it before the ship fully sunk for $63 million. So when it's all said and done, Healy's was an impressive independent startup shoe company that had a bigger impact on the world than 90% of shoe models ever made, and Roger made a killing on it. So why did Healy's fail? Well, I'm not so certain that it actually did, at least from the perspective of Roger, the inventor of Healy's. So let me know what you guys think and what your experience has been in Healy's over the last 20 years, and thank you guys for the support. See ya.